okay? Yes, I can. I can hear you and the little lady. <laughs> Good afternoon, and it's 1.30, and I'm the host of the Runner's Show, Michelle Padilla, and I have Jim on, on the show, and I've been reading your bio, and I was very impressed because some of the shows that I used to watch as a teenager, I was shocked that you did Jimmy Neutron, Jingle All the Way, and Star, Star Trek. I'm a big fan of those, by the way, so I am a kid at heart, and when I found out that you did Pinky and the Brain, I'm like, <laughs> so I was really excited about that. So how did you get into voice acting and how did you, what is your favorite and most memorable voice acting? If you can remember. As <laughs> if I can remember. Yeah. You have, <laughs> you, have to, you have to check with people like me to see if we actually remember. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> well, uh, I got started, uh, you know, I'm the son of an actress, mm -hmm. Marion Ross, who was on a show called happy days yes. way before you were born. Uh, actually, then, she was uh, on my show, by the way. Oh, all right. Well, then you know all about <laughs> yeah. her and how wonderful she is. She's a treasure. And and this month, in fact, in just a couple of weeks, my mother will turn 95. Wow. It's pretty exciting. So, we're so you have a big, huge plan for her? We, we are, we're we waiting to see. She uh, She's kind of getting over a little bout of COVID, but she's fine. So we, she's got to be she's got to be negative in order for us to have a party. <laughs> That's a requirement, but I think she will by then for sure. She's already doing much better. She's on the mend. Anyway, so speaking of mom, growing up in a uh, family where it was uh, not just tolerated but kind of encouraged to uh, play around with your voice, to do accents and characters and, and impressions, uh, at least. At least in, in my little household, my parents were divorced, so it was just my sister, my mom, and me for most of the time. In that part of my world, it was very tolerated. So, gosh, I remember my mom surprised us. She bought a, very early on in the 70s, something she saw advertised in one of the one of the local magazines she got in the paper. I think it was a cassette recorder radio thing, which we still have this thing. It's a workhorse. It doesn't. I, don't, I actually don't know if it works anymore, but it, it, at, in the time we learned how to eventually make recordings and record our voice on a little plastic microphone. And it was so thrilling. And I used to make endless little radio shows and long, boring, you know, meandering recordings of myself playing different characters. And so it was always just something that I, I got a lot of spark from. I guess, you know, just like it was a kind of play that I enjoyed very much. And as you got older, you, got, you did more. Who's your favorite character or voice you like to do? Well, I've been lucky. I've been able to do all kinds of things. I love to do the Robin Williams Blue Genie character because I do that for Gen Genie uh, <laughs> projects for Disney all the time. And uh, I've been doing that for about, I don't know, 10 or 12 years. Uh, and uh, that's always fun because people appreciate it a lot. It's a lot of it's, it's an interesting challenge. Plus, it's an honor really to carry it forth with that character and to kind of preserve the the nature of that performance. Now, could you do a uh, Robin Williams in Good Morning Vietnam? Good morning Vietnam. <laughs> See, I, a lot of people don't know that that I, my family and I grew up on on TV and television and grew up on. Good morning from Vietnam. We grew up in happy days. And so they're asking me how old I am. And I says, well, I got two parents from the 50s who were born in, in the 50s. And so we were growing up. And I'm like, those were my favorite. Robert Williams, Popeye. He did Popeye. I don't know if you can do Popeye. But Popeye was the best with Robert, Robert Williams. And so, like I said, I love watching TV or classic TVs, and I can still watch Happy Days as far as I can remember. And then they ask me who is Happy Days; they don't know. So, <laughs> but again, I am I'm I'm grew up I'm seventies. I'm I'm born 1976, and hmm. so um I got all the great shows. I got Happy Days. I got Laverne and Shirley. I said I can still watch those for hours and hours and hours. And then later on in the nineties, you had Jimmy Neutron, you had uh, 
Pinky and the Brain. I loved Pinky and the Brain. That was one of my favorites. Come home from high school, watch cartoons all day long, watch Pinky and the Brain. And then I would watch uh, Jingle All the Way with my dad. That was his favorite. So he just passed away recently. So, oh, I'm so sorry. So he would sit there, watch the TV shows with me, and, you know, we're sitting there laughing at each other and laughing at it. And and he's the one that actually encouraged me to do the radio show, just like your mom did. So um, I'm a big fan of Big Scully. I don't know if you watch baseball or not. Well, I certainly know Vin Scully. I think everybody in Los Angeles, uh, <laughs> with the sound of Vin Scully's voice, would remember the great Dodger announcer who uh, led us through so many terrific games and uh is sorely missed by the dodger organization i'm sure are you a dodger fan Do you, sure you're gonna watch all five games this week you betcha <laughs> see up here i live in sacramento and so it's kind of like giant town so <laughs> yeah i'll be honest i'm not a, i'm not a huge fan of any sports i i love to watch the world series because uh, the thing I remember about, you know, I played little league baseball. That's about my only experience with actually playing the game, but I did play for, for five seasons when I was a little kid. So I still remember the feel of a, the, you know, the ball hitting the glove and the bat hitting the ball and running around and sliding. And I, I remember those sensations very well. So when you watch, if you've had that experience and you watch a game, it's, you get to really kind and of. And then when Ben Scully tells a story, he tells a story, you know, it's like, it's kind of interesting. So he plays it out. And I actually um, interviewed Ryan Dempster. He's, he was um, a pitcher for Boston Red Sox. So how I got to interview him is he started an organization called 22Q11. It's a syndrome which I have. It's kind of like Down syndrome. So you have all these different symptoms going on. And, and and so I got to know him. He would talk about Vince Scully. And so, you know, Vince Scully, he would, like I said, he would tell a game like, like you, no tomorrow. You can watch the ball game. And so we're going to get our hot dogs on on Saturday. We mom watch the game. So it's going to be, you know, she never misses the game. So she watches it with dad because dad is a Dodger fan. And my, I think one of my all time favorite cartoon shows and Star Trek. Believe it or not, my mom and dad does watch Star Trek, so they're a fan of Star Trek and Star Wars. So I think my favorite Star Trek was was the Voyage, Star Trek Voyage, from home when mm. they were, when they were trying to find the whales, and uh, she watches. She watches Picard. She watches all the Star Trek. So when I tell her I'm, I'm going to have you on the show, she's like, what? How do you get all these people on your show? And so I just said, I, I have a friend, Harlan, who reaches out to you guys. And then you guys come on to the show when you talk about what other projects you are up to. And so we just have a great time about it. So what is a new project that you are currently working on? Well, right now, because we actors are still on strike, I'm really not working on anything uh, in the movies and television, but I am always auditioning for commercials and and animated shows and, and other little smaller projects. But right now, most of my uh, time is being taken up preparing my live show. I have a live one man show where I do a lot of impressions and tell a lot of stories and sing and uh, I do things with the audience it's audience interactive i do robin williams i do patrick stewart Ooh, I do nice. Tommy Jones, and a lot of different characters and so that show is going to actually be on october 14th and 15th and just not this weekend but next weekend it'll be live uh in sherman oaks here in california but i'll be live streaming it okay. to the world so anybody can watch it and you can just go to my website jimmeskiman.com and sign up and i'll send you all the information and you can watch it I would definitely watch it because I'm a big fan of that. And then do you do um, Indiana Jones? Can you do Indiana Harrison Jones? Harrison Ford. You're talking about Harrison Ford. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can, but I get kind of serious whenever I do him, you know, because he's uh, he's always uh, stuck in some situation he doesn't doesn't feel too comfortable with. <laughs> I think, yeah, I mean, I like how you do all these different voices, and it's interesting so when you started doing voices, how long did it take you to perfect them? How long? Will you spend hours on it or? 
Oh, some of them I've been working on for years and years. You know, they, uh, I'm always trying to perfect things, get a little better. Uh, you know, also a lot of the people that I imitate, they don't stay the same, you know, they change, they get older, their sound changes. So I have to constantly be reviewing these characters that I love and these celebrities that I follow and see, well, what do they sound like now? Or maybe they do a movie where they play a completely different character. And suddenly you have to figure out, oh, well, that's that's interesting. I like that sound. I like that twist they put in it. So it's kind of a what I like about this art form, and it is an art form, is that you get to continue to explore and learn and practice. And you never really attain perfection. That's not that's not the goal. In my case, I'm just trying to entertain audiences and show people a good time. Now, do you ever do wrestlers, like imitating wrestlers like Hulk Hogan or Randy Macho Man? Uh, I think I think I remember hearing Hulk Hogan once or twice. But, <laughs> I, you know, I, I'm not a big uh, wrestling fan either. Uh, although I've seen these guys. And obviously Arnold Schwarzenegger is not a wrestler, you know, but he's sort of lumped into that category <laughs> because he's uh, enormously big in the chest, <laughs> you know. But... Uh, uh, and Sylvester Stallone, uh, similar because he's you know he wrestled uh, or didn't wrestle, but he boxed Hulk Hogan. I don't remember if they wrestled the box. Maybe it was a combination. I don't know. Well, I don't know. It could have been. <laughs> uh, what about any presidents? Can you do any presidents? Well, I tell you what, I used to do that uh, George <laughs> W. Bush, <laughs> and uh, still every now and then I I, I whip him out. <laughs> How about uh, Bill Clinton? How about Bill Clinton? Ah, yeah. let's see. Yeah. There you go. Donald sure. Trump? <laughs> <laughs> well, Donald Trump is, of course, a very controversial figure. Very controversial figure. But <laughs> it's okay. It doesn't matter. Everybody, every president, every president, believe me, you know this. It's fantastic. that They all become controversial. They have to become controversial figures <laughs> because people are going to talk about them long after they're gone. That's the way it is. See, I like how you can do that. And it takes a lot of practice and years to do what you do. And I, you know, I just started doing voice over myself. I'm not good at it. So <laughs> I'm learning. I don't do expressions or anything like that. But um, well, that's okay. The main thing is communicating. Do people yeah. understand what you're saying? And do you get your ideas across? Yes. And Jim, for our, we've been doing the awareness show for 11 years. Mm -hmm. So we started doing podcasting before it got huge <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. and so we started out in a studio at Cal State Dominguez and we called it a dungeon because we had no internet service so I had no content at the time and my dad would talk, text me and say talk say something do something <laughs> and I didn't know what to say at the time so I had a lot of dead air and so we figured out okay we're gonna change this up the the ante a little bit and talk about causes and awareness and see what happens. So like mm -hmm. this month, for instance, we have Disability Employment Awareness Month. Mm. So it's a big, huge thing because it also celebrates the uh, the 50 years of uh, the Department of Rehab Act of 1973. So they're going to make a big, huge deal here at the Capitol next week. So I'll be a part of that, helping them promoting disability for people with disability jobs. And so, you know, that's another thing that we started doing, making sure people understand about the resources that are there. And get, sometimes we get politicians come on to the show and they like to talk about themselves sometimes. Mm -hmm. And we try to change the subject, you know, mm -hmm. but all the, in all honesty, we have fun on the awareness show, and we try to make it more fun to get more celebrities on here and talk about different stuff besides the politics, besides yeah. the resources, because I think right now that's the time that we need it. Mm -hmm. And I know with the writer's strike, I've been following you guys with the writer's strike. I know it's been chaotic, so hopefully you guys could get back to work and make yes. uh, people laugh and entertain. I think that's what we need right now. I don't think we need any more strikes going on right now. Kaiser, exactly. Kaiser right now is going on strike for three days. You heard about that. And then, you know, it's just, they just ended the strike up here. And so it's been kind of like, so 
Yeah, well, I couldn't agree more. Uh, you're absolutely right. And that's that's why I'm doing my live show so I can keep keep entertaining people and keep uh, keep people's uh, keep people smiling and uh, having a good time until the the actor strike is settled. Luckily, the writer strike was resolved. So that's pretty much over. But now we just got to get the actor's contract all sorted out. And I think it'll happen pretty soon. Now, now how much are your tickets? Are your tickets? Well, if people can live stream it for free. OK. Uh, but if, if they, they want to come to you. Be, yeah, if they happen to be in the in the L.A. area, I welcome them to come to uh, the acting center. Uh, tickets are twenty five dollars and uh, it's in Sherman Oaks. And you can find out about it by going to the acting center, L.A. dot com and you can get tickets there or go to Jim and all the information is there as well. But either the acting center, L.A. dot com or Jim dot com. <laughs> And hopefully your October fourteenth and fifteenth at eight p.m. And hopefully your mother will call if she's COVID free. <laughs> exactly. And I'll have two wonderful musicians working with me. We have a couple of musical numbers that we do, two or three, and uh, maybe four actually. And uh, it's it's super fun. It's a super fun evening. It's good for families. Uh, you know, kids. I'd say fourteen and up, no problem. Uh, and uh, I think everybody will enjoy it a lot. It's audience interactive. There's a lot of improv and uh, maybe 60 or 70 different celebrity voices. I do quite a lot. And uh, I try to jam in it, jam in as many as I can. <laughs> now, can you do Potsy Weber's voice? Yes. In fact, you mentioned uh, Pinky in the Brain. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I'm going to I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that you interviewed Anson Williams. <laughs> Is that I, true? It is very true. Okay, yes. well then you know this, this is pretty much what he sounds like, or he used to sound like back in the day. Yeah. Hey, hey Richie. Hey Ralph. Let's go. Let's go to Arnold's. And <laughs> I did Pinky in the Brain. I got hired to do Anson Williams' voice because he was a character <laughs> briefly in an episode of Pinky in the Brain. And that's I gotta watch that episode now. If you can yeah. send me that link or have Arnold send me the link, I'll watch it because I want to see him. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, that's um, where I met Rob Paulson and Maurice Lamarche, who played Pinky in the Brain and became good friends with both of them. Now see, that's, I love this kind of stuff. And like I said, I, I always knew that I, as a kid, I wanted to do radio, but mm -hmm. I didn't know what I wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. So my role models were uh, Vince Scully, Rick mm -hmm. Dees in the morning, mm -hmm. uh, Casey Kasem. One of the greats. There you go. Is it Wolf? I'm going to say Wolfman Jack. Yeah, baby. <laughs> uh, Karen's 101, all those. And my, it's because of my dad, because he loved music. Hmm. So he showed me a different side of how people can talk and how people can interact with certain people. And, you know, he was always one of those people. Um, a lot of people today, they want to get into the radio business. And I see them doing podcasting. So now they just talk about anything and anything and what they want to talk about. But it's a skill and a mindset that they have to, you know, take. It's not easy. Um, For sure. I like I broke away from KDHR when we uh, moved up to Oxnard, and then I started formatting my videos into Zoom into podcasting. So I did that on my own without anybody's help. And so we had COVID, and it was hard because I'm the only I'm the only child. Uh -huh. So when my mom had COVID, my dad was taking care of her and me and the dogs, mm -hmm. and that was kind of hard. So. Um, he just died of a heart attack. So it, 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 and honestly, I, I told him I'm going to keep it up for my dad because I know he would want me to keep it up. And it's hard for me at certain times to do the show because I'm always, I'm working at Department of Conservation and it's actually my first day job. So I'm very excited. And uh, today, I do. Today yeah. is your first day at work? No, I bet, I'm, well, I'm maybe, been, I, maybe I misunderstood you. Uh, uh, your first, my first day. State, state job. job. State okay. Job. Yeah. Okay. I've been you. here for a year, year and a half. Uh, I got, actually got to meet uh, Governor Newsom. I have a picture at my desk. So no, that's, all, that's all right because I think if you scrub your hands really well and go into the shower, you'll be fine. <laughs> I know. And then, like, like I said, sometimes we don't talk about politics. So, um, again, when I came here, I didn't know what department department conservation was. So hmm. they deal with. 
oil, they deal with energy, they deal with flooding, earthquakes, tsunamis, and all that stuff. So, and the fires, the wildfires that we had recently, so. Mm. Right, right. Wow, that sounds amazing. Yeah. Well, I'm very sorry for your loss. I'm sorry that your father passed away. That's very sad. You have my my sentiments. Yeah, so I, I took a break and then I came back. And like I said, I love I love what I'm doing because I get to meet you and I get to meet your mom. I get to meet Hanson, you know, all these lovely people who come onto the show. And, you know, I just love what I do. And they always ask me, who's your favorite? And I'm like, you know, I I can't say that because you know, I, I have a lot of favorites. And so it's interesting. And they said, are you going to keep going? And I said, yes, I will keep going. So Excellent. they asked Good me. you. They asked me to write a book or do a TV show. I'm like, I don't know if I want to do that yet. So <laughs> I'm, talking to you one on one is fine, but public speaking, I freeze up. So. Oh yeah, that's yeah. I understand. I did a a tour of uh, America giving keynote addresses one year. I went to about thirty state capitals and gave an hour long keynote address, and it was really quite an experience. So, you know, you get nervous and you get, yeah. Yeah. You get a lot of attention. You got to really get used to it, get familiar with your material. And you want to always do a really good job. So if anything goes a little wonky, you're like, ah, try again next time. (laughs) So my question is, what kind of songs are you going to sing at your show? Well, I'm glad you asked. I have a big opening number that's about maybe five or six minutes long, very fast. (laughs) That is my, uh, uh, my celebrity alphabet where I go through the whole alphabet and a different celebrity with a different celebrity voices for each letter, sometimes more than one, sometimes three or four celebrities for each letter, all to music. And uh, it's, it's, it's great. It was really difficult to learn, but I have it down now and audiences really, really enjoy it. Now, do you do any women voices? Uh, You know, I don't much. Um, Have you tried practicing on your mom? Have you tried to do her? You know, the thing, I mean, my mother, I, I, I think uh, that's a, people ask me that a lot. I really need to come up with a, a definitive answer for that, but I, I don't put her in my show. I just kind of talk about her because when, when men imitate women, it sounds a little bit like we're making fun because we have to go into falsetto and then there's something sort of innately humorous about it. And uh, actually, my mother doesn't sound like that anyway. She just sounds, she, her voice is like this. And she'll say things like when she meets people, you know, uh, she meets people all the time. And she'll say something like, well, we can just get those teeth fixed. <laughs> she sounds like my mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, yeah, not too many women, but a lot, there's, luckily, there's plenty of men to imitate. I also do a, a, a a musical number where I do a, a an old standard on the sunny side of the street, that old song. And I do it in the style of Willie Nelson and Bob Dylan and Frank Sinatra and uh, uh, Billy Holiday, who's a woman. That's yeah. one. And uh, uh, several other, uh, six or seven others sting. And uh, that's, that's a fun one to do. How about Bruce Springsteen? Bruce Springsteen. I just should put him on the list. Yeah. I don't do a Bruce Springsteen number. I have in the past. Yeah. He, yeah, and then I do a uh, salute to Mr. Rogers at the very end of my show. Ah, nice. Fred Rogers and I wrote a little song that is sort of a sort of a Mr. Rogers song, and we sing that to kind of wrap up the whole evening, and it's a lot of fun. What about Desi Arnaz? What about Desi Arnaz? Yeah, you get of course, he's, to the not list. So much known. He, he's not so much known <laughs> as a singer anymore, but of course, he was a fantastic singer and entertainer. Rosie, yeah. I'm home. <laughs> You can add him to the list. He's on the list. See, <laughs> I see. I I like that, and I'm gonna be watching it. So that's next yeah. week, uh, October Saturday and Sunday, October 14th and 15th at 8 p.m. live stream. And if you go to uh, jimmeskiman.com, go down the contact form. You can find it and sign up. It's free. You can watch it and enjoy it. I hope you have a great time. And uh, and if you happen, if any of your listeners or your watchers, uh, your viewers rather, happen to be in uh, Southern California, you want to come in person, even better, come to the Acting Center in uh, Sherman Oaks on the 14th and 15th of October. And it's also a solar eclipse next week. Is that right? Yes. Oh, so do not look at the sun. Don't no. look at the sun. Whatever you do. No. 
So just like every other day, don't look yeah. at the stuff. Yeah, and you got Friday the 13th next week, so there you go. Oh, my goodness. This is a lot of <laughs> big events. Big events. So I hope your show is a success, and I will be turning tuning in. Will it be on YouTube after you do the live stream? Uh, probably uh, at least excerpts of it will be on YouTube. Okay, yeah. okay. Somewhere for sure, yeah. Thanks for asking. Yeah, because yeah, I, I want to make sure. So. <laughs> yeah, I have a very busy YouTube channel, so people can – Follow me there and see my daily videos. And uh, I'm on Instagram. I'm on TikTok. And it's uh, it's a busy life. Well, are you on Facebook? Oh, of course. Of course. Then I'll stalk you on Facebook. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I won't do that. That's fine. <laughs> uh, let me ask you a question. Mm. Now, do you go to Comic Cons? Do you go to any of those, com like Comic Cons? And Well, just a couple of weeks ago, I went to my first, uh, yeah, my first comic convention i went to fan x in salt lake city nice i met a lot of fans and i was there for three days signed a lot of autographs met a lot of people and it was phenomenal i mean the costumes the cosplay the other celebrities that were there there were people from back to the future there the main cast was there andy circus was there from lord of the rings uh it was it was a big affair and there were you know, upwards of a hundred thousand people that, that were traipsing around through there. So I, you know, I don't know how many more of those I will do, but uh, it was a great experience. I'm really glad I went. Well, if you ever go to LA Comic Con, because that's one of the biggest ones, mm -hmm. I have a graphic designer who is tabling at that event in a few months. Her name is Maxi Rodriguez. Sorry, Rodriguez. Oh, Rodriguez. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um. So she she's the one that designed our logo. Ah. So what it is, it's a record player with the chromosome. So that's how she came up with it. So oh, okay, good. He just recently got back from San Diego Comic Con, another one that mm -hmm. is a big one. And so if you ever go down there, check it out. It's fun. I was supposed to go last year, but I got ended up getting COVID. Ah. So I had COVID, and then I had my sinuses, and I was stuck in LA for two weeks. Oh dear, that's <laughs> like a that's like a prison <laughs> sentence. Yeah. So needless to say, I wasn't too happy about that. So, so yeah. Well, uh, well I've enjoyed talking to you. Yes. A lot of fun. And I, I uh, hope you enjoy the live stream on October 14th or 15th. Yes. And I hope to do it again with you. I hope that maybe next time having you and your mom on the show, that would be kind of cool. Well, you know, she's pretty retired right now. Yes. But but thank you for the invitation, and I'll certainly yeah. send it to her. And I will post if you send me the link. I can post that up on my Facebook so they can actually listen to you on live stream, and I think they would get a kick out of it. Oh, great! I will. I'll send you something. All right, thank you. You can have thank a great. You. you have a great weekend. You too. Thanks for the interview. It was really <laughs> you nice. You too. Bye bye. Bye. bye.